Stop thinking about yourself. Oh my gosh. Honestly, y'all, I'm just telling you guys the same things that I feel like I have, I'm having to tell myself. What's up, YouTube? Daisy Rose here, and I'm back at you guys with another video. On this channel, we strengthen our faith, learn from our mistakes, and have a lot of fun. Okay, so if that sounds like something that you are interested in, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the post notifications so that you don't miss out on anything good ever again. And today, I'm here to tell you to stop focusing so much on yourself. A lot of the times, people are so worried and so stressed out and so bogged down with life because all you can think about is everything that's going wrong with your life. And I'm here to tell you that the minute you take your eyes off yourself, that is already the first step to living a more peaceful, life stop being so in your head and be more in the present be present in your day there's so many things happening in your day and when you are so caught up in your own problems and in your own issues and in everything in life that you wish was better in fantasizing and maladaptive daydreaming about this imaginary greener pasture of grass you miss out on what god is doing right now you miss out on the goodness of god that is available to you right now you miss out on god's presence which is not over there in some distant future god is with you here with you he's with you here he's not with you in the future that you think that you know but you don't really know he's with you in the present that you should not be taking for granted because the present is a gift that's why it is called the present <laughs> I got that quote from Panda Express, but I'm pretty sure it didn't originate from there. I just don't know where it originated from, so I'm going to credit Panda <laughs> Panda Express. I'm hungry. I obviously haven't. I've almost, I'm obviously fasting. I'm fasting right now. Panda Express. I meant to say Kung Fu Panda. My gosh. Ah. <sighs> master yoshi i think anyway i'm pretty sure he uh, any, anyway anyway i'm not even gonna lie like i i have a whole bunch of things that i could worry about that i could stress about that i could mumble about that i could ask god why you know about a lot of those situations a lot of these circumstances would be valid they would be valid things to like worry about or wonder about or ask god why about but honestly truly that doesn't really accomplish what you think it will especially because God oftentimes cannot and will not, not cannot, because he can do anything. But oftentimes, if we are holding on so tightly to a situation or circumstance, if we're holding on too tightly to something, he's not going to get involved in it until we surrender it in some capacity to him. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's obviously been a long week. Y'all are seeing this video on Monday, but it's Sunday when I recorded this, so. This week that we've come out of was a long week for me, okay? I don't really know who is on the other side of the screen, what kind of day that you're having, what kind of week that you're having. I know it's the beginning of the year. You might be fasting. You may be seeing this at the end of the year. You may be seeing this in 2032. I don't know. But regardless, man, I know. My phone better not. You better not. I have um, been fasting and praying. Today's the last day of my fasting and prayer, thank God. And a lot of the things that I've been contending for during this round of fasting and prayer are things that I have been praying for and asking for for a long time. Things that I've been seeking breakthrough for for a long time. And you know what? I believe that the longer it takes, the bigger the blessing. Like, if, if it's taking God this long to get it together, if it's taking God this long to put everything together that I've been praying and asking him for, then it must be good. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, it's not everything that we ask God for that we will receive. But it's, it's different when you're asking God for things that he's already told you are yours. It's like, okay, God, you said that this is mine. I'm asking, I'm praying in agreement with what you've said to me, with the desires that you've placed in my heart, because the word says that delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I don't think that that scripture just means that God is going to give you everything that you want. No, if you delight yourself in the Lord, you spend time with him, you pray, you worship, you read your Bible. God will give you, literally give you desires that are in alignment with his will for your life. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That in spending more time with God, you start to desire things that God desires for you. You start to become more like him. You start to think like him and you start to desire the things he desires. And so I feel like that verse is kind of a double-edged sword because yes, God will give you the things that you want, but he will also give you the things that you want. <laughs> he will give you the things that you should want. He gives you the things that you want and then he gives you the things that you should want. I'm speaking to you in the way that I wish somebody would speak to me because I need this word. I need this encouragement because it's hard to be content. 
like i know that we're supposed to be content in all circumstances but we're also human beings it's okay to acknowledge that you're a human being and sometimes you're not content or sometimes it's hard for you to be content in the situation and season that you find yourself in when you know that god promises better for you in his word why should i be comfortable in poverty when god says i have access to an abundance of riches and glory in christ jesus when god says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but that he has come in order that I might have life and more and life more abundantly. When God says that his future for me is prosperous, why would I be content in lack? Why would I be content in, in singleness? For those of you guys who are waiting for a relationship, when the Lord says it's not good for a man to be alone, let me make a helper for them. When the Lord says two are better than one because... When one falls, the other is there to help him up. But pity the one who walks alone for who can help him up. If two people are sleeping, they can keep each other warm. But who can keep the one warm who, who sleeps alone? This is Bible. Okay, so yes, we are to be content in all circumstances. But I also understand it. If it's hard for you to feel content when your circumstances and your situations and your seasons are not in alignment with the promises of God and with the things that he's made accessible to us as co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Okay? That's not to say that there's something wrong with you or that there's something wrong with God if your situations and circumstances aren't perfect because God doesn't promise us a perfect life. We will go through trial. We will. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm thinking about my trials. We will go through trials. We will go through tribulation, but we can also take heart and know that whenever we're going through these seasons, they don't last forever. Joy! Joy! Joy comes in the morning. Weeping lasts only for a night. God will take us through a valley, but the valley is always going to lead to a mountaintop. God doesn't lead us through the valley to leave us there. He doesn't walk us through the valley of the shadow of death to leave us there. No, there's something that God is producing in you through the seasons of questioning, through the seasons of struggle, through the seasons of weariness, tiredness, through the seasons of stress, through the seasons of not feeling like you have enough. He's producing something in you in order that you can get to a place where you know that you always have enough, regardless of what's in your bank account, regardless of how many friends you can call, regardless of who's sleeping next to you or not, regardless of whether or not you feel loved or by your church community or not, whether or not you your business is doing as well as you thought it was going to do at this point in time, you always have enough because as so long as you have Jesus, you have everything that you need. And sometimes the seasons that you're in are teaching you that whether you have little or whether you have plenty, you can be content and you can learn to find joy and peace in that. And I am in that place right now, baby. I feel like I've been in that place for a long time, but you know what? It's okay because God's ways are higher than my ways. And I and I believe and I trust that he knows more than me and he knows better than me. And that when the time is right, baby, I'm not going to be feeling like this no more. I'm not going to be in this place anymore. There, there will come a time where I will walk in the fullness of everything God has called me to and promised me. And until that day comes, it's just going to be me and you encouraging each other and rooting for each other and walking this walk with each other. Y'all are seeing this in real time, okay? I'm documenting this for my own sake as well because sometimes when God blesses people, it's easy to forget where you came from. Some of you guys are in that place right now where God has blessed you or God has given you things. He's answered prayers for you that you were praying for so for so long. And because you don't remember what it was like to be in that place of lack of 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 wanting, of waiting, you've you've taken the blessing for granted. Some of you guys have your health. You didn't have that in a season. You prayed and you cried and you sought the Lord for your health. And now you have your health and you are discontent because God hasn't done this thing or you or you're not appreciative of it because you're you forgot where you were at before. I think that's also the beautiful thing about seasons of like this seasons of like seasons of the valley, because it's in the valley where you learn to not depend on anything that this world can offer you, because if you can be content with little, with nothing, then you can't be bought. You can't be swayed by the things of the world because the things of the world are not what's giving you your happiness. It's not what's giving you your joy. Ooh, this is helping me. If nobody watches this video, I got something out of this video today. I don't care. But subscribe if this video has helped you. If this video has helped you up until this point, subscribe. So yeah, you know that the things of this world are not what bring you 
are not what satisfies you and that is when god is able to trust you with more and you can't play god i think sometimes we try to play god like yeah god i'm good i'm good i'm good yeah i don't need no man and then we think that because we pretend god sees your heart and it's a heart work that he's doing in you it's a character development that he's doing in you that's why obedience is so important that's why submitting to the process is so important humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of god and in due time he will lift you up in due time he will lift me up baby i'm humbling myself under the mighty hand of god because i just trust him that his decisions his ways are better than mine and i trust the the process that he's taking me through i may not always like it come on somebody i may not always like it but you know what i'm just gonna submit to it because i've tried it my way i've tried it my way it hasn't worked i've done things my way i've failed i've tried to put god last tried to put god second tried to put god third the only way that this thing works is when you put god first there are things in my life that are not as i wish they were there are people who probably think i'm crazy for believing the things that i'm believing that god is going to do for me there are people who probably think i'm crazy who probably think i should just give up who probably think like this girl is still waiting on god to do something in her life this girl thinks that god's gonna she she need to go to school she need to get a job she need to do something because god ain't doing i know that there's people who think like that about me and you know what every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned that is my inheritance as a servant of the lord and it's god's great joy and pleasure to vindicate me and i know he will in his due timing and in the meantime those of us who are in that place where we're we're walking a path that makes no sense to us let alone to other people we're walking a path where we are being pushed where we are being tried where we are being tested where our strength and our character is being pruned and we have no other choice but to rely on and lean on and depend on god those of us who are in that season um you're not alone you know i wish i could say oh it's okay like it's gonna be better sometimes but sometimes you don't even want to hear that we know that that's true but sometimes i don't know sometimes it just helps to know that there's other people who are in that season with you there are other people who can empathize it's not you're not the only one elijah you're not the only prophet left there are seven thousand ones you're not the only one you're not the only one <laughs> and in due time it will change in due time god will vindicate you and god will give you everything that he said he was going to give you and you're not crazy you're not crazy oh you're not crazy you're not okay that's for somebody you're not crazy stay holy